what I have started here <clears throat> a couple of minutes ago um, is this latest version of Symfony. I have installed a couple of, of components. So first component is the TC adapter, which does all the communication with the BMW portal. Um, as we can see, I'll just go into the configuration uh, list of the TC adapter. We can have as many different configurations, means we can talk to many different um, servers. Here in our example, I have connected us with the development environment at BMW, so specific URL, like all the security related stuff, credentials. Um, those are the typical um, configurations we take to, to connect to a server. Um, then I installed the CodeBeam adapter, pretty much the same story. I can use the CodeBeam adapter to talk um, to any number of different CodeBeam servers. I just put in the, the URL of the server, the credentials and the project I want to work with. Um, I have then installed our basic template uh, so that is going to bring most of the synchronization, uh, synchronization functionality like a best practice uh, that we have co been collecting in the past 10 years. And I have then installed the default TZ to CodeBeamer uh, process. Uh, it's also ready built, it's ready to go. We also have these, um, these processes like TZ to JIRA, TZ to HPALM and everything. Is, is, is ready built. Um, on the configuration level of the process itself, I have just been setting up a first project. So you can imagine, like if we, if you remember Ralph's complexity slide, if there's a growing number of projects that you're gonna exchange with BMW, just the number of configurations here is increasing. And <clears throat> that configuration just puts together like which TZ server we wanna talk to, which code be more uh, server we wanna talk to, um, then we usually have to decide, this is specific to CodeBeamer, which of the trackers we are going, going to drop the data in. Um, I was choosing for a box tracker. And then also we have to uh, define a couple of what we call mapping scenarios. And these mapping scenarios then are descriptions of the data transformation. So mappings themselves are maintained inside the mapping module. Um, Again, we have kind of a folder structure here. So in my example, there's only TZ related mappings, but if you remember uh, Ralph's complexity chart, there's also then maybe download under related, partial related and so on, like folders. And inside we're gonna find what we call mapping scenarios. Um, and I have been setting up one example here. That's a description on how we're gonna translate the data. So source side is BMW side, destination side is CodePima side. And at any point in time, I could just go ahead and add some more, some more stuff like say, oh, the error occurrence, I'm gonna map it to, to another destination field. Um, the other configuration aspect in Symfony is usually uh, what we call the scheduling, a uh, same kind of concept. We have like a folder structure, any kind of BW related schedules, then comes Daimler related and so on and so on. And then inside per project, usually one configuration <clears throat> on when the exchange is going to happen. So I can just, we can just check here. That's a, that's a cron type of configuration. So we can bring in pretty much any kind of, oh, let's run this at eight o'clock, 10 o'clock, 12 o'clock, 11 and so on. That's pre-configured. Um, and last not least, what we always have in Symfony is uh, a live view into the system. So that is what we call the process diagnose. That's showing what is really going on in the moment. So I had a little shock this afternoon when I looked at the dev environment so that we have collected 1200 new um, bugs to be exchanged. So I started the process already. And as you can see, there's a little indicator on where we are little calculation on how many um, how many of these um, synchronizations went good, how many failed. Um, there's an underlying as an underlying um, transaction model behind that. So the way Symfony is going to deal with these synchronization is in the first place we're going to make up um, the scope. So we're going to ask back and say how many of these these items have to be synchronized. So in our case, almost 1,200. And then we just we just process them step by step. 
Um, and this this processing is also can also be done in a fail-safe mode. So if you have, if if it happens, you have a second server, you have a cluster of two servers, um, and let's say the first one the first one you would just simply shut it down. The second one would take control and not not restart at the very beginning, but just continue. That the transaction has already uh, gone to. So for 68 are preloaded. Let's check the code BMO side. Um, Here's our box tracker of 470 are, are loaded, 471 are loaded. Um, and due to the nature of the of the TZ development environment, this is randomly generated content. So it's not that's not very beautiful, like the blood description and any unique identifier. So as the process continues, it's 476, and then we can double check just back to the uh, tracker itself, 478. And so here's how the synchronization goes along. Um, so that's pretty much um, pretty much how the story works. As I said, um, these combinations with the tools are are already like are already pre-configured. So whatever you need, um, we'll have the right process in place already for you. 